Hi, I'm Dan Oler, and welcome to Oler's Acres. And some of you have purchased natural grass bed, grass fed beef from us before, and so I'd just like to show you a little bit about how that all happens, where it really comes from, and a little bit more about the management of this uh, system. Now, really, the natural grass fed beef, it's Wonderful, as you know, you've eaten it. But there's a little more to it than that. And actually, the beef is just a byproduct. Because really, all that we're doing out here is we have a whole bunch, in fact, acres of solar panels. Let me just show you what I mean. Yeah, grass. Solar panels. They soak in the energy of the sun. They use the nutrients of the soil and they grow, that's their way. And then the cattle, these lovely red Angus steers, they eat those, that grass which gives them the nutrients uh, to, to turn it into natural grass-fed beef which is extremely healthy and good for you. Now I'll show you a little bit about sort of the management of what goes on here. Now this grass, if you look very carefully, this grass is, let me just zoom this in here, and this grass has, if you look across the paddock here, you can see that almost every blade of that grass has been nipped off by the cattle, stepped on, peed on, maybe even, maybe even pooped on. And that's all good nutrients for the those solar panels right there. So really what we're doing here is simply growing and managing healthy natural grass and the beef is simply a byproduct of that process. Now if you look down the field there you can see it looks a little bit lighter colored and then darker colored. Where it's dark that grass has not had any animals on it yet this spring. The field that looks a little bit lighter, that's right where I'm sitting and that has had animals on it for, in this little paddock, right on close to seven days now. The green part that you could see, let me get away from those cattle a little bit, the darker green piece that you could see, look out fellas. The darker green piece that you can see over there, that's uh, the nice green grass that has not had any animals on it yet. Uh, tomorrow I will be moving, putting down that electric fence and moving the cattle over there. It's a very simple process. These animals get very well trained, they're smart, and uh, they look across the grass, across the field, and of course the grass is always greener on the other side. So when I come out here tomorrow, all I do is uh, take down the electric fence between a couple posts, just call to them and they will just follow me right in there. Every week I move the fences and move the cattle and what, what that happens then is that uh, over a period of the summer most of these paddocks only get grazed once or maybe twice depending on the quality of the grass. Some of the grass that is a little more vibrant and grows in the lower areas as I pan around you can see some of the lower areas down there now those areas down there, they grow back very, very quickly, especially when you've had this nice moisture. And so those areas, they can be grazed two, three, maybe even four times. However, it's really, really important to give them a good rest between. The ideal time is to let the grass grow till it's just about to flower, just before it starts to head out or right about that point. And then you get the cattle back in there and they nip it off, just like you do with your lawn when you mow it. However, rather than mowing it and just spreading it across with your mower and using up all that gas and pollution and so on, instead it gets turned into beef and also into fertilizer, which these critters just are so lovely to just distribute around and they do a really, really good job of it. Now because the grass is very natural, uh, there are amazing little bugs and bacteria and things down in the soil that do a great job of very quickly turning that manure and the urine into fertilizer. In fact, some of these cow pies here, if we were to come back tomorrow, some of the very fresh ones that were dumped there today, and if we turned them over, there would be all kinds of little beetles and bugs down in there that are very quickly turning that into good soil, good fertilizer that the grass uses.
So there you have it. Maybe tomorrow or one of these days I'll get Carol to come out and help me and she can actually film one of the moving of these cattle. It's not like the old west where you get on the horse and yahoo and yippee ki and drive them for miles. We simply let the fence down, call them, and they follow us through. No stress. Very easy. As you can see, they seem to be quite happy and content and just truly enjoy life. I guess that's kind of how it should be. Working with nature, producing green energy, great food, and having a lot of fun. Have a great day.